Hi everyone, it's Professor Permanton. In this video, we're going to talk about the production level project. So in this project, you're given a letter from Rex Wayne, who's the proud owner of a Texas oil company that manufactures and sells oil barrels. They have a guy that compiled enough data to fill a 10 gallon hat, but don't know nothing about how to use the equations he came up with. This is all that he can tell the company's owner. The demand for oil barrels is given by the equation 2 times P minus 2,400,000 equals 2 times Q to the third power, subtract 446 Q squared, subtract 800 Q, where P is the price in dollars that they charge per million barrels of oil, and Q is in millions of barrels, and that's the number of barrels that they sell. On the other hand, the cost is in dollars that they produce Q millions of barrels of oil is given by the equation C equals Q to the fourth, subtract 250 Q to the third power, plus 20,000 Q squared, plus 500 times Q, plus 1,500. The company's owner also knows that from personal experience that these formulas, the formulas for the demand for oil barrels and also the cost, aren't worth a darn if Q is more than 19 million barrels. So that means that Q has a limitation or a constraint where it cannot be exceeding 19 million. So here's what the company's owner would like to know. Right now, they're slated to produce 20 million barrels of oil. Are they going to make a profit? And if they are making a profit, how much is the profit? Is there a general equation that they can use to find the profit at any production level? The company's owner is trying to get a handle on the margins. So what's the formula for the marginal cost, which is dollars per million barrels of oil produced? And what is the marginal revenue, which is dollars per million barrels? At what production level is the marginal cost the most? And where is it the least? And lastly, since the owner's a straight shooter, he really only wants to know about profit. At what level of production is the profit the most? So in this production level project, it's going to be structured very similarly as the last project we had. You have a series of questions from the company's owner that needs to be addressed. And so I've taken these questions and broken them down into problems and then also broken them down by parts. So question number one is asking, Rex Wayne informs you that his company, Wayne Barrels, is slated to produce 20 million barrels of oil and needs to know whether he is going to make a profit. In addition, Wayne Barrels also needs to know a general equation to find the profit at any production level. So in part A, you have this equation that was for the demand equation, 2 times P subtract 2,400,000 equals 2Q to the third power, subtract 446Q squared, subtract 800Q. So this is an equation that gives you the, so this is an equation that models the oil barrel production level, where P is the price per barrel, and the question is asking you to take this equation and solve for P so that you can obtain the price demand equation. So take the equation and get P by itself on one side of the equation. Now in part B, once we know what the price demand equation is when you have P solved for, now we can find out what is the revenue function R of Q. And remember that the revenue function is defined as price times quantity. So that means from the previous answer, you'll have P solved for in terms of Q. So if you have P replaced with the equation you found in part A, then your function will only depend on the variable Q. And that will give you the revenue function for Wayne Barrels. In part C, since the owner of Wayne Barrels is only really concerned about the profit, you need to calculate the profit function so that you can find out the profit at any production level. So find the profit function, which we know is defined as profit is revenue subtract cost. So once you have the revenue function and the cost function was given in the problem, now you have a way of calculating the profit function where Q is the variable and it represents the production level of any number of barrels of oil. And then in part D, since Wayne Barrels is slated to produce 20 million barrels of oil, is the company making a profit at a production level of 20 million barrels? And if so, what is the actual profit that the company will make? So in part C, you calculate the profit function, and in part D, you want to calculate the profit when the production level is 20 million barrels. Keep in mind in part D that Q is equal to 20. It's not equal to 20 million because the units on Q were already in millions of barrels. And problem number two, although J. Rex Wayne has a person that has compiled data for the company, the employee does not know how to use the price demand equation nor the cost function. However, the company would like to know a formula for the marginal cost and also the marginal revenue. In particular, the company needs to know at what production level is the marginal cost at a maximum or a minimum. So in part A, you're asked to find the marginal revenue function. So you found the revenue function in the previous problem. Now you just need to find the marginal revenue function. In part B, you are given the cost function in the letter. So now find the marginal cost function. So take the derivative of the cost function. In part C, determine the intervals on which the cost function for oil barrel production is increasing and decreasing. Keep in mind that the oil barrel production is represented as the variable Q. Q cannot be a negative number, so you should not have values that go off to negative infinity. 
And also keep in mind that the owner told you that the formulas that were given in the letter do not make any sense if Q is beyond 19 million barrels of oil. So the intervals, whether they're decreasing or increasing, should stop whenever Q is equal to 90. And then in part D, use the extreme value theorem to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values for the cost function if they exist. So use the extreme value theorem. We had a method where we found the absolute maximum or an absolute minimum if they existed for a function using its derivative and the critical numbers and also considering the endpoints for the function. You definitely need to keep track of what interval you're talking about for the production level. Remember, Q cannot be a negative number and Q does not exceed 19 million barrels of oil because in the letter they said the formulas do not make any sense beyond that level. And then the last problem, number three, since Wayne Barrels is primarily interested in profit, we need to assist the company in finding the level of production when profit is at its maximum value using the marginal profit function and its optimal value. So part A, find the marginal profit function. So previously you found the profit function for the company to now find the marginal profit function by taking its derivative. And then in part B, use either the first derivative test or the second derivative test for local extrema to find any local maxima or local minima for the profit function. At what production level, what value of Q is the profit maximized, and what is the maximum profit that the company will realize? Remember with the first derivative test, you find your critical numbers where the derivative is zero or undefined, and then you constructed a sign chart to find out where is the function increasing and decreasing. And the function could change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing at a critical number, and then that meant the critical point was either a local maximum or a local minimum, depending on whether it changed from Decreasing and increasing, that would be a local minimum, or increasing and decreasing, that would be a local maximum. You can use the first derivative test to find out where is the profit function maximized. Or you can use the second derivative test for local extrema. Remember how this went. You found the critical numbers using your first derivative, but then you substitute those into the second derivative to find out at the critical number, is the function concave up or concave down? And that will tell you whether you have an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum if you only have one critical number. So this finishes our discussion on the production level project. If you have any questions about what the problems are asking for in this project, please let me know. Or while you're working on the project, if you have any other questions, please let me know that as well.